Hey everybody, Kyle from Scram Speed here. Uh, today we're going to go over a couple things as far as chassis coating and uh, roll bar coating goes. I have people all the time ask me when they get a cage done or they just had you know chassis work done, they need to touch up stuff. What should I coat my cage with? What's the best product that you've found to coat the cage with? Easy, convenient, something I can do in my garage. And I don't ever really have a great answer for them because none of the products I've ever tried have been that successful. Uh, when I did my personal cage in my car, I painted it for a living at the time. And I did a base coat, clear coat, black um, with high gloss clear, and it sucked. It was the worst thing I've ever painted in my life. And I've recently put a 25-3 cage in my car, and I have to coat it with something other than base coat, clear coat, so I don't have a good solution for it. And in the midst of me trying to find a solution, I have a new product I wanted to try, but first I kind of wanted to show you the couple of products that customers of mine uh, have used in the past. So these are the two products that are most commonly used that I see people do for coating roll bars, roll cages, uh, any kind of suspension components when they get done fabricating. The first one I see is they just use black Rust-Oleum uh, satin. It comes in a can similar to this. Uh, it's oil based. It is decent stuff. It gives it a decent shine. Uh, it's what Steve uh, here at Scram Speed has on his roll cage. And I did a test sample a while back just to show customers kind of what it turns out like. This is only one coat of it. It lays out better with two, but you can still see how many imperfections there are in the bar. Any kind of sanding uh, will definitely show through. You'll have dirt in it. I couldn't really get it that clean to turn out when I did this test sample. Um, but if you're just going for a black look, it definitely does its job. I did a test sample on something flat to kind of see how it would lay out if you did you know, a, a wheel tub or something like that. And it doesn't look bad if you get the flop. It looks okay, but if you're right on it in the light, you can see kind of how much dirt's in it. And that's one coat, and then you can kind of see where I overlaid the second coat. So the one coat turned out honestly better than the second coat, but that's just a satin black. And both of those are brushed on. Um, I was trying to find something that people could do at home. You don't need to do any kind of, uh, any kind of masking off, because that's the other big thing, is you have to mask off anything if you want to use an aerosol, or you'll get overspray on everything. I was trying to find something that would brush on and lay out real nice. And this product is the most common one I see people use nowadays, which I usually recommend. It's, it's the Hammer Tone Black from Rust-Oleum. It's very inexpensive. It does lay out really good. This is uh, two coats. You have to do two coats with it or else the fish eyes show through too bad. But uh, this is two coats of Rust-Oleum Hammer Tone. And it really looks good. It, it doesn't show too many imperfections as far as the bar goes or, or any kind of uh, prep that you did to the roll cage, sanding, grinding, anything like that. It, it will cover most everything. And it, it looks really, uh, it looks really even. Just, it, it lays out flat um, and nice and even. It's super easy to lay on with a foam brush. This is a test panel I did just to kind of see the difference in one coat versus two coats. And that is one coat where my thumb's at. And you can see the fish eyes in it. And then this is two coats. There are no fish eyes practically. It covers it up really good and gives it a decent look. Um, you can see a little bit better when the flops like that. So that's what it looks like on a flat panel. Really, really pretty decent. If you don't like hammer tone look, then you're not gonna like it obviously. But if you're going for a hammer tone look, then this is by far the best product to use. Um, I have a roll cage that has paint on certain bars already and I did a test sample to show what it looks like if you just sand half the bar down. So you have bare metal on this end and this end was coated and I couldn't tell where I sanded the paint through. It's so thick that it covered it right up. Um, turned out really pretty decent. I, it was my go-to product um, for what I was gonna use for my 25-3 case. Up until recently, I discovered a new product a guy on Yellow Bullet told me about and it's called Steel It. Um, it's made by Steel It, that's the name of the company and they offer two different flavors it's uh it, it's available in like a silver or it's available in a black and they have a couple different lines it's available in aerosol you can brush it on if you buy it by the court and this product uh is stainless based like with a, a polyurethane resin and allegedly this stuff can be welded so you can lay it out which is what this test sample is right here you can lay it out and you can cut this plate in half and weld it back together. Or if you need to do a repair because there's a crack on a rear end or something, you can weld it right back together. Um, I'm going to test that out today just to see how well it does, but this product can allegedly be brushed as well. So that's what had me kind of sold on it. If it could be brushed and it didn't have a hammer tone look, 
and it could touch up easily and be welded on. It might be great for rear ends or chassis components, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's primarily used in ball haul chassis is what I've seen it and they advertise it as being a hell of a product that can take the abuse of ball haul racing because um, they literally get sandblasted when they race. And after a day of ball haul racing, they can check and make sure that uh, there's no cracks in any of the suspension components. And if there is, they can weld directly over it because it's a stainless based coating. Um, it has a really flat sheen to it. Um, looks really good. I, I like it. It's, it's not totally black. It's more of a gray. But when I did this test sample, I uh, was experimenting and I actually did half of it in a red Rolock and I did half of it in 36 grit. It recommends sandblasting or 36 grit DA to adhere to any kind of a metal. So this is the 36 grit side, which you can kind of see a couple marks from the 36 grit. Not too bad though, it's really hard to see. And then the Rolock side is pretty perfect. It didn't have any dirt in it really. Um, it laid out super nice. Uh, this was sprayed on with that can. So this wasn't the brush version, this is the aerosol. But I was gonna do a test today of cutting this in half, welding it back together, um, and then trying to touch it up and see how it, see how it does. Um, I had a full week of cure time, and as it was curing, I was actually thumbnailing it just to kind of see how hard it was. And you can kind of see a couple days after I coated it, it had a thumbnail. And then eventually I tried on this side and I wasn't really able to get any thumbnail. Um, it would just, my thumbnail would just glide right over it. I couldn't get it. So it is a very hard product, which is very appealing. So I'm going to cut this thing down, weld it back together, do some touch up and uh, see if maybe I haven't found the perfect product to coat roll cages and any kind of chassis components with. Okay, so I actually got three different pieces here cut, and out of the three, I thought it'd be worthwhile since it's a stainless base coating to try a stainless rod, and then to also try ER70S mild steel rod, just to see kind of how it turns out. So we'll burn these all together and uh, see how it does. It's off a of gas that gives you cancer for sure. But it does well. And it actually welds surprisingly nice. It's not ultra hot, only about 50 amps, but I was just trying to put a bead down. But it actually welded pretty good. You can watch that coating kind of burn back a little bit and then the bead laid out really nice. I was also interested as it got hot, if it was like thumbprint almost a little bit or anything. So we'll see how that one goes. Now I'll try a uh, mild steel one. Christ, that's that ever stink. Man! The COVID doesn't give me this shit well for sure. But it does weld really nice. So I didn't have any problems welding it. It, it burnt through good. So that's super handy if you're trying to do some uh, tab adding on your already coated roll cage or rear end or any kind of uh, chassis or suspension component. You don't even have to sand the shit. You just weld right over it. Now I'll let it cool down and uh, mass cap it off and try to do a recoat and kind of see how it recoats, if it looks good or if it has a hard line or how durable it is going directly over itself. So in my further test to uh, check and see which one's the best and how stuff holds up, I did a brake fluid check on each one of these products. Uh, it's always important to make sure that if you're going to coat something, if it's going to be underneath the car, you're going to have an oil down or trans fluid or brake fluid or something to get on suspension components. And the last thing you want is for it to get really gummy or tacky 
and then when you wipe it off with brake parts cleaner or something, it, it essentially ruins your coating. So um, I wanted to check it with brake fluid, which is for sure to tell if this stuff holds up or not. So I just put a dab on each one of my test samples here of brake fluid. It's sat for about 30 minutes now, which should be long enough to tell um, if it's going to wipe off good or, or be gummy underneath or, or whatever have you. So I'm going to wipe it off real quick and see how these hold up. Wiped all the, uh, the dots of brake fluid off and I also took uh, some just first aid brake parts cleaner and rubbed a spot on it just to kind of see if it would lift and they all had a little bit on the paper towel as far as come off. That was actually the worst one um, definitely is the steel it as far as lifting and coming off with brake parts cleaner if you rub on it. Um, and the brake fluid was pretty even across the board. You can see there's a dot for sure. Um, and underneath it was rather gummy. I thumbnailed it and it came off similar with the hammer tone. I thumbnailed it and it came right off. And with the steel it was about the same. The brake fluid didn't affect it maybe as much but really pretty close underneath it it was gummy. And then when I rubbed a location of the steel it it's like the top layer of uh, whatever the hell is in it kind of came off and you can see the metallics underneath it, the little fine particles of stainless in it. Um, so none of them are that great. They are all, you know, technically like a single stage where there's no top coat, uh, but they all aren't impervious to brake parts cleaner or brake fluid for sure. So not one exactly shine better than the others. So I got the sample recoded and I let it dry over the weekend, about 48 hours now, give or take a little, and, uh, and it looks really good. It, it coated fine. You can kind of see where I didn't sand it all the way through. I sanded one side better than the other, so you can see that you need to really sand down um, all the scaling that comes off from the heat. If you get that all off, it really coats good. You can see some of the sand scratches, but I only did one coat on this just to kind of see how it would look. If you did two thick coats, I bet those sand scratches would go right away. But I knocked it down with 220, which is what they recommended. And it, it did coat really, really nice. So it's easy to coat, good to touch up. I think the there is a discoloration. You can kind of see it. If I give it like a look, you can see that the this is a lot darker than the previous coat. And I believe that's just because of the, uh, the discoloration from the heat when I had to weld it. That's most likely what it's from. Um, so if you did it on a large piece, I doubt you'd have that you know, infected area of discoloration too far from that heat weld. And then you could just, you know, touch it up. So a final word about these three products. I definitely like the steel it more than the other two. It, it coats nice. Uh, it is a harder product. It doesn't fingernail nearly as bad after it's had its dry cycles. Um, the Rust-Oleum is definitely the best as far as covering up things you don't like. It covers up everything and does a good job at it. It's very easy to apply with a roller or a brush. Um, if you want something a little bit nicer, the steel it is much more expensive, but and it it looks amazing. It, it's nice stuff. I think this is what I'm going to end up using on my 25-3 cage and start recommending customers use on their 850 cages as well. Um, as soon as I get it in a court and I can do some brushing with it, I will uh, do another video and show you a little bit, you know, how it goes and if it works out just as well. But definitely recommend steel it though. So give it a check out.